Live from our seven Tasmania studios, your nightly news with Joe Palmer begins now. Good evening, everyone. Tasmanian farmers are facing a devastating blow to their water supplies in one of our peak growing seasons. Producers are being told to halve their water usage as the southeast irrigation scheme dries up. Farmers say they've been blindsided by the restrictions. If you've eaten lettuce, there's a big chance it's come from one of the farms run by the Houston family in southeast Tasmania. The businesses are a major producer supplying local and national supermarkets. But now, these farmers are facing a serious threat. The situation's quite critical because we rely 100% on, on, on reliability of water for our vegetables. And uh, if we ha don't have supply for a week, we're out of business. Farmers who rely on the South East Irrigation Scheme are being told to cut their water usage in the peak of the spring growing season. If we run out of water, we'll have to close the door, basically, when we, and there's no coming back. If we're not reliable um, with our produce to sell to the supermarkets and the, and the other stores, they will go elsewhere. Tasmanian Irrigation says it's restricting water access as it faces dry conditions and interruptions to supply. Last week, demand outstripped supply by six megalitres a day. Irrigators get, uh, a, get a, um, a certain amount of water per day. Um, we're asking them to take half of that or to take the equivalent over two days. The utility company says it's had to reduce capacity at its Derwent Valley treatment plant to prioritise drinking water, meaning there's less for farmers. We will continue to look at whatever we can do to ensure we meet the demands of everybody. That's our customers for drinking water and they're our primary responsibility but also supporting the irrigators and we will do that right through the summer. The question now, how did this water crisis get so bad so fast? Significant agricultural investment worth hundreds of millions of dollars and hundreds of jobs are at risk. Minister, how did this situation get so dire so quickly and without adequate warnings to irrigators? There's a lot of work that's going on, Madam Speaker. Speaker. It's being considered as a, a priority issue. It's a serious matter. It's been considered seriously. With no clear and quick solution in sight, Tasmanians are being urged to do their bit by monitoring their water usage to help our farmers. We've just got to be water conscious, I guess. Um, I'm not saying that Hobart should restrict water too much to help us. But Taswater says restrictions in the Greater Hobart area are a possibility and something they're looking at with the government. Ebony Ablett, 7 Tasmania News. Mobile phones will be banned in Tasmanian schools from next year in an urgent effort to improve student learning and counter the rates of bullying. The state government says the move will improve the health and well-being in the schoolyard, but some parents have doubts. They're an infinite database of information at the fingertips of young minds, but they come with the dark side. Cyberbullying can happen um, 24 hours a day. The latest figures show one-fifth of Australian students have experienced cyberbullying in the past year. But the state government hopes a new ban on the use of mobile phones in schools will help put an end to those worrying figures. We always need to create a respectful environment wherever we are in our community. From term two next year, all smart devices will be blacklisted in the schoolyard and classrooms from bell to bell. There is just no doubt that they're a significant distraction uh, to learning. There will be exceptions for medical conditions and specific learning tasks. Staff and students at Newtown High School already introduced a similar ban last year and have witnessed the benefits firsthand. As many as 80% of our students said they had not had an incident of cyberbullying in the past 12 months. I've noticed the classrooms are a lot quieter, a lot more focused than they were because there were people with, on their phones. Some parents are supportive. I think students need to focus more on their study uh, and less on their phones. While others fear the move is overkill. But I think they're a good idea at the same time, just if they need help and um, learning new things. And Garth Burley, 7 Tasmania News.
To breaking news now, and Tasmanian infant formula producer Bella Mees is in line to pay nearly $50 million to settle two class actions. Legal firm Slater & Gordon says it has reached an agreement with Bellamy's to pay $49.7 million to shareholders who argued the company misled the market before its share price plummeted in 2016. The agreement remains subject to court approval. Hundreds of shareholders signed up to the class actions in early 2017. The alleged victim of a shooting in Kings Meadows has described his fear in the moments leading up to the incident in January of this year. Kurt Jenkins claims he was just trying to clear his name of rumours he'd been involved in a robbery. Prosecutors allege he was shot by Jacob Williams in a case of mistaken identity. Our reporter Sean McComish has more. 27-year-old Kurt Jenkins told jurors he agreed to meet Marcus Williams after rumours spread he was responsible for a home invasion at Kings Meadows. On January 9, two men entered the property on K Street and doused Taylor Stevenson and her son in fuel. Her partner Jacob Williams was told Mr Jenkins had been involved and Marcus Williams soon arranged to meet Mr Jenkins at the South Launceston McDonald's. It's there the alleged victim claims both accused produced guns and forced him to drive to Pinkard Street at Kings Meadows. When he refused to go inside a house, a scuffle followed. That's when he pulled the gun out and shot me, Mr Jenkins said. Defence lawyer Evan Hughes argued it was Mr Jenkins who fired his own weapon after becoming angry. Mr Jenkins answered no. It went off in your hand, didn't it? No, he repeated. He also denied suggestions the three men had travelled to Kings Meadows to find methamphetamine. The alleged victim of the home invasion also gave evidence. Taylor Stevenson told the court she was unable to remember any of the incident. The trial continues. Four climate protesters arrested after causing disruptions to traffic on a busy CBD street have been slapped with a range of fines in court today. The activists from the Extinction Rebellion group held protests in Launceston last month, urging government leaders to act on climate change. The group was arrested after refusing police requests to leave St John Street. Another man escaped without a fine and was given a good behaviour bond. The makeup of Tasmania's precarious parliament could be tested once again, with heated debate over controversial anti-protest laws expected to run late into the evening. It follows a significant shift in power yesterday, with MP Madeleine Ogilvy using her independent vote to back contentious government legislation. A parliament on edge, the fallout of a shift in political power, leaving tensions flared. Tremia! I'm speaking. Independent MP Madeleine Ogilvy yesterday using her vote to force through controversial mandatory sentencing legislation, leading to questions today over whether the government did anything to secure her support. Right. Premier, Tasmanians have a right to know what price your government has paid for Ms Ogilvy's ongoing support. Uh, I utterly reject uh, the assertions, uh, the offensive assertions made by uh, the member, not just with respect uh, to me and my government, Government, but also Ms Ogilvy. It's the position of power stolen from the rogue speaker, Sue Hickey, who last night crossed the floor. I don't want to be, you know, in five or six years' time looking back and going, oh, I just played the political game. But Madeleine Ogilvy could be forced to show her hand again with debate on the government's anti-protest laws kicking off this afternoon. Trespass aggravated by the intentional impediment of business activity has the potential to cause significant economic loss for workers. The numbers tight with Labor and the Greens against the plan. This is a dog of a bill <laughs> that is designed to take away the freedoms that Tasmanians have enjoyed to peacefully protest. This bill is an attack on workers. This bill is an attack on freedom. This bill is an attack on human rights. The debate is expected to continue late into the night. Michelle Wisby, 7 Tasmania News.
Visitors to Hobart could soon be staying in rooms a little bigger than a coffin. A planning application is in to turn this building at the Gasworks into a capsule hotel. It would squeeze in 40 beds in little private pods with shared toilets and kitchen facilities. As part of the downsizing trend for accommodation, a capsule hotel also opened in Launceston last year called the Pod Inn. Hobart has once again been given the unfortunate title of the nation's least affordable city for renters. New data found affordability has taken a nosedive in the last year, dropping to critically low levels. It's labelled South Hobart, Taruna and Gilston Bay as severely unaffordable, forcing even average income households into rental stress. Experts have now called for urgent government intervention, with prices expected to continue rising. Australian Border Force has confirmed details of two Tasmanian operations. Officers inspected cargo handling at Burnie and Devonport, testing the integrity of the supply chain. It's been described as an operation regularly conducted at ports across Australia as authorities monitor any criminal vulnerabilities in the movement of goods. We understand no arrests have been made. Emergency crews were called to a peak hour crash in East Launceston this morning. Police say the crash happened on the intersection of High and Balfour Streets around 8.30 between a car and a motorcycle. The motorbike rider was assessed by paramedics but didn't suffer serious injuries. The occupants of the car weren't physically injured. Well, the anxious wait is just beginning for Tasmania's top draft prospect, Mitch O'Neill. The North Hobart product has revealed his pick of the AFL clubs while giving an insight into the types of questions asked by recruiters. Mitch O'Neill has the weight of the state on his shoulders. The 18-year-old is easily the front-runner to become Tasmania's next AFL footballer. I thought I was on the track, I played some reasonable footing and... Yeah, I feel like I've done everything I could have done. There's proven interest in O'Neill. At least four clubs nominated him for last month's AFL Combine and he's a two-time under-18 All-Australian. There was a dress rehearsal of sorts last year, seeing Fraser Turner's AFL dream come true. Yeah, I was actually at uh, Fraser Turner's house last year when he got drafted to Richmond, so... Um, that was a great experience to see, see how he went about it all. If he could choose, O'Neill would go to Richmond to play alongside Turner or to the Western Bulldogs, the team he supported growing up. While he's also revealed how recruiters like their cryptic questions. You've got five toys to play with and like they're all baby toys, which one would you play with and why? So just weird stuff like that, they throw you off. The draft will be held over two nights, making for agonising but potentially life-changing hours ahead. What well, cricket now on the Hobart Hurricanes squad is locked in with two bowlers rounding out the side. Spinner Clive Rose has signed on for his fifth Big Bash season with the Canes, while paceman Nathan Ellis has inked a deal after a standout season with the Tasmanian Tigers, where he took five for 38 against New South Wales. Other Big Bash teams took note of the young talent following that game. That's beautifully bowled. What a comeback from Ellis. It's a small world, the cricket, the cricketing environment, so everything sort of can happen really fast, but um, I've always, as I said, always wanted to play play at the Hurricanes, so to get that opportunity down here, I'm stoked. I think the last few years I've found uh, I've found myself being a little bit more comfortable in my role, and um, and I've been around a little while now, so I can um, help some of the young guys coming through. Rose has taken 18 wickets during his four seasons with the Hurricanes. Launceston's Rebecca Van Ash has notched up 250 games representing Australia in lawn bowls. She's currently playing the milestone match against New Zealand in the Trans-Tasman Test Series. She debuted in the green and gold in 2011. And a Tasmanian kickboxer has made the brutal transition to mixed martial arts in his bid to turn pro. Ethan Boswood will step into the cage for his MMA debut in the upcoming Tasmanian Fighting Championships, which is also featuring its first female matchup. Strip away the glitz and glamour of fight night and you'll see just how hard it is for an athlete preparing for the big show. Ten weeks of consistent training, six nights a week, four to five hours every night. But Ethan Boswood says it's worth the sacrifice as he aims to turn pro and perhaps even reach the UFC, the sport's highest tier. Majority of the guys in the gym are a lot bigger than me but it hasn't stopped me. But yeah, they ragged on me a fair bit but it'll be good to grapple with someone and fight some of my own weight. His journey begins in 10 days' time when he makes his MMA debut in the third edition of the Tasmanian Fighting Championships. The Hobart athlete has previously competed in kickboxing. Nothing prepared him for MMA. Crazy on your body, different muscles, using all different 
different angles and getting slammed all the time. The championships will also feature its first female bout between Hobart's Renee Hill and Olveston's Beck Nancaro. I am a little bit nervous because I haven't stepped into the cage before. Um, so it's, you know, the uncertainty of what's going to happen um, and obviously the cage is locked so there's no getting out. We'd have about 10 professional MMA fighters in, in the state um, but when it comes to the amateurs I'm seeing the numbers grow bigger and bigger. The Tasmanian Fighting Championships are on at Hobart City Hall December 7. Good evening, plenty of cloud around today with widespread showers over the west. Hobart along with friendly beaches, our top temperature with 21, Launceston 17, Burnie 15, Devonport 16, Lyawini the low with minus 1, St Helens reached 18 degrees, Flinders Island, Grove and Ooze 17, King Island 16, Lowhead 15, Strawn 13, very low numbers for this time of year. Now here's the cloud over the state today, some prominent mountain waves over the east as well. The cloud band over our region is linked to a front over the southern ocean, cloud to the the east is circulating around a low pressure system and some thunderstorms are over southeast Queensland and a trough has cloud cover over inland WA. Tomorrow the front crosses Tasmania in the morning. A trough lies over inland New South Wales connecting to the far north. Winds northwest to southwest at 15 to 25 knots, reaching 30 knots during the morning before softening in the afternoon. Swells picking up to four and a half metres. So we do have a strong wind warning from the northern extreme of Flinders Island down to low Rocky Point. And for Hobart tomorrow, a top of 20. Early and late showers. Signet, same sort of forecast with 19 on board and 20 the high for New Norfolk. Launceston tomorrow, 22 degrees and mostly sunny. Fine for Devonport at 19, 22 for Campbelltown after an early shower clears. Mostly sunny for Burnie, 19 the top, 16 for Strawn, Smithton, 19 possible early showers for those two centres, 18 the high for St Helens, a shower for Swansea with 20 and 21 for Fingal. UV, very high on 10 tomorrow. On Friday, fine over the central north and west. A few light showers elsewhere with light winds. Showers over the east on Saturday extending statewide late morning and another showery day on Sunday with freshening northwesterly winds. Mostly sunny in Perth and Adelaide. Partly cloudy uh, in Melbourne tomorrow, a top of 22 degrees. Warm for Canberra and Sydney and a cloudy 29 for Brisbane. A little bit of cloud around here as well, 18 degrees in Hobart, 14 in Launceston, 13 in Devonport. At this point, Joe, I'd like to wish your husband a wonderful birthday for today. Let's hope he has a terrific evening. I hope you've treated him well because I can only imagine what he's got to put up with. <laughs> he's a very lucky man, almost as lucky as you. Thank you very much, Murph. That's all from the team for now. Thanks for your company. See you a little later. Bye-bye.